Hello, dear students and, uh, and foreigners level two, grades uh, two and uh, six, uh, Christian Golub, Carlo Golub, and uh, uh, Zainab Bustani. Today we are going to start with a new lesson, uh, which is actually this lecture is lecture uh, three of uh, semester four. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we are going to uh, tackle the lesson, how are you? As we know, in the past two weeks, we've studied the lesson uh, and discussed the lesson, uh, what's his name? And now we are going to uh, tackle or discuss the lesson, how are you? which is continuous to the lesson, what's his name? So let's start. First, we have to start by introducing the objectives and the learning objectives of the lesson. In this lesson, the student should be able to what? To differentiate between the first, second, and third points of view. So we are going to know what do we mean, what are the pronouns for the first point of view in Arabic, the pronouns for the second point of view, and the pronouns for the third point of view. Create simple sentences in Arabic language, and these actually are related to the first, second, third point of view. Create a dialogue in Arabic language, and then differentiate between something called sun letters and moon letters. Now, we are going to start with our lesson for today. Actually, we are going to start with the dialogue. With the dialogue, how are we going to start with the dialogue? First, here there is a dialogue between Dania and Mia. Of course, now, now we know how do we greet others. How do we greet others? We've learned this and we've learned how do we express our names in the uh, Arabic language. Now we are going to know how do we say to others, how to ask others about their current status in Arabic. So Dania will say to Mia, hello, which is means marhaban, okay? Marhaban for me and for who? For Dania. Here, first of all, Dania said to Mia, hello, as, as she, she's talking to her on the phone. So, hello means in Arabic, hello. You start usually uh, with hello in Arabic language. Now, Mia says, hello, Dania. I am Mia. Hello is what? Marhaban. We know this. Marhaban, ya Dania. Why we say marhaban, ya Dania? Because Mia is speaking directly to Dania. I am Mia. Ana, Mia. Here, no, he's, she's not introducing her name here. He's, he's, she's just saying on the phone, I am Mia, in case, for example, Dania doesn't have her phone number. Dania, hello Mia. When we say marhaban, we reply by what? Ahlan. So when I say marhaban, I reply by ahlan. How are you? We took this before. Kaifa haluki. In case I am talking, because Dania is talking to Mia, is asking Mia about her current status, she uses Kaifa Haluki. But if you are talking, directing our question to a boy, we have to use Kaifa Haluka. So, Mia, here we are going to learn something new. Mia, praise God. And you, how are you? Are you fine? So here Mia is going to ask also Dania about her current status. What did Mia uh, uh, answer? Uh, what did Mia say about her current status? Mia said, praise God. What do you mean by praise God? Praise is alhamdu. God is alhamdulillah. So with each other, praise God is alhamdulillah. And you, and is wa. You is what anti here, so you is wa anti. If I am talking to a boy, I say to him wa anta. So you here, I'm talking when I say you here, and head, I'm talking to one person, and this one person here, it's a feminine. I'm directing my question to what? To a feminine. How are you? Kaifa haluki. Are you fine? Are you fine? This type of question you are going uh, to answer by yes or no. Whenever we are going to answer by yes or no, we start with what? Hal. Always, always when I ask a question that the answer of it will be by yes or no, we are going to uh, 
we are going to uh, start with Hal. You, we agreed here, we are talking to Mia, we are talking to one person which is feminine, Hal Anti. Fine. Bikhair. Hal Anti Bikhair. Fine. Remember when I used to ask you, Kaifa Haluka, you say, you say to me, fine is Anna Bikhair. So I am fine. Fine means here, this is the first current status you can reply with. Anna Bikhair. Or the second current status is praise God. Praise God means Alhamdulillah. So praise God is what? Alhamdulillah. Let's see what will Dani ask. Praise God. Yes, I'm in the best condition. Here, there is something new about her currency. She is not only fine, she is in the best condition. Yes is what? Naam. Why did we answer by Naam? Because the last question was, are you fine? Are we, we said when we, we have a question that needs to be answered by yes or no, we start with hell. Naam. I am is Anna. In the best condition, best is in ana bi ahsan. Condition is hal. Remember when you used to ask, How are you? Kaifa haluka or kaifa haluki in general. Here I am ana bi ahsani hal. Walhamdulillah. If you want to say, I'm in the best condition, ana bi ahsani, you can say ana bi ahsani hal. And to answer here, we have praise God, Alhamdulillah. Why did I add Alhamdulillah? Because here I add praise God. I just bought a new book. She's informing now, Dania is informing me that she brought a new book. What do you mean by boat in Arabic? Boat. In general, boat is ishtara. In general, boat is what? Ishtara. Boat is ish. But, but here we have I just bought I. So both is ishtara, and because we have I, we need to add to it ta ishtara to this. This is a. In ishtara, it becomes ya. Replace this a. It becomes, yeah, because you're talking about, and, and you add after it, so it becomes ishtaraitu. A new book, book is kitab. In Arabic, in Arabic language, in Arabic language, we start with shuffle. Yani if, you, if you start in English with a new and then book, in Arabic, you should start with book. Book is kitab, new is jadid. So new is jadid. But he, of course, here when she said, I just, a new, I just bought a new book, this book is unspecified. She didn't specify what's this new book. So it's unspecific or unspecified. Okay, so here we are going to uh, make a summary of this uh, dialogue. Here, Dania, if Dania and Mia wants to uh, start talking on the phone, Dania said hello, which means in Arabic, hello. We start with hello. Mia says to Dania, hello, Dania. I, I am Mia. So Dania, Mia is calling Dania. Dania said, Mia is calling Dania. Dania, what did she say? Hello. Mia said, hello, Dania. Marhaban, Dania. Ana Mia. In case Dania, uh, Dania doesn't have the phone number of Mia. Dania, hello, Mia. How are you? Hello is Ahlan. We, we reply to Marhaban by Ahlan. How are you? Now we are going to start talking about our lesson, which is the current status. How are you? Kaifa haluki. She said kaifa haluki because she is talking to Mia. We have three things to reply by kaifa haluki. Either praise God, either fine, or either I'm in the best condition. Here she said praise God. Alhamdulillah. We said that praise God is alhamdulillah. And you, and is wa, always and is wa. You in Arabic is anta or anti. If we are talking to a feminine, it's anti. So wa anti. How are you? Kaifa haluki. Are you fine? Here you are going. When you say are you fine, you're going to say yes, I'm fine, or no, or no, I'm not fine. You start with hell. 
you is empty and fine be khay. Dania said a new thing about her. Yes, I'm in the best condition, praise God. Yes is na'am, that's why we started with hell. Ana, in the best be ahsan condition. Hal, praise God, walhamdulillah. I just bought a new book. Bought is what in general, ishtara. If you are saying I bought, ishtara, this is, we call it in Arabic, alif maksura. Alif maksura. This needs to be replaced by ya, and then we add after it ta plus dhamma. It becomes ishtaraitu. Book is kitab, and the new is jadid, and this book is unspecified. Now we continue. There is a, conti a con there, this page is continuous to the dialogue. Now, Mia said, who wrote this book? Because this book is unspecified. Who is what? Here I'm asking about person. When I'm asking about person, we knew that we have to use men. Who wrote this book? Book is what? Kitab. Okay? So men. And this is what? Hada. This is kitab. Always this is hada or this, which is a demonstrative pronoun. It's hada or hadhi. So this is hada or hadhi. She didn't give any information about the book. It's a speci it's unspecified book. So who I'm asking about the person, it's man. This is hada here because what? Because book is what? Masculine. So book is masculine and doesn't contain ta marbuta. So wrote is what? Kataba. So from the book, kitab is the noun. The verb is what? Kataba. So the verb is what? Ka ta ba. So it's kataba. So men kataba hada. Here, why did we use al here? There, she said, I just bought a new book. This, when she said kitab, the book was what? Here, kitab, the book was unspecified. But here she, she's, Mia asked her, who wrote this book? Here she's specifying by using a demonstrative pronoun. Now the, the book become specific. Specific what? Noun. Because it's specific, we start by using L, okay? So, man kataba hadha al kitab, because the book became specific. Man kataba hadha al kitab, I'm asking about person. Dania said his name. Name is what? Ismu. And his here, ismuhu. Or if you have her name, you say ismuha. What's his name? The name of this book, okay? So, here, who is man when you're asking about a person? Wrote is kataba. This book, when here you use a demonstrative. Uh, pronoun this means in, in Arabic hadha or hadhi man kataba hadha book it's no longer a specific a, a unspecified pronoun it's now specific or definite noun so it becomes man kataba hadha al kitab al kitab when I am specifying I use al now What are the, as we said, one of the objectives was creating a dialogue, and the second adjective was talking about or differentiating between first point of view, second point of view, and third point of view pronouns. The first point of view pronouns, as we know, it's I and we. I, we know it, it's Anna. We is Nahnu. So I is Anna. We is Nahnu. We, Nahnu. Okay? Now, these are the first point of view pronouns. The second point of view means that you are talking to someone. Talking to someone. Okay? Talking directly, of course, to someone. The second point of view means that you are talking directly to someone. And if you are talking directly to someone, 
you need to use the second point of view pronoun. And when you're talking directly to someone, usually use the pronoun you. But we have the pronoun you that is singular and the pronoun you that is plural. Here, if you are talking directly to someone by you that is masculine, it means anta. You are, or for example, anta. And, but here, here it's a singular one. If you're talk, talking to someone that is feminine and one, it means anti. So the second point of view when you're directing your question or directing everything you're talking to to someone. The first point of view you're talking about yourself. Yourself is Anna, one. Ourselves is we, which is two or more. When you are talking about two or more persons, you're talking about ourselves, you use we. Now we have two persons. What you are directing your, your question or your talking or anything you're talking to two persons. Two persons here, we are starting with the plural. Now we started with the plural. As we know, even if you are directing your talking to two persons here, the you, will still mean the, the you here, even if it's plural, or the pronoun that it's used, even if it's plural, it is you. Okay, we said that you means anta or anti. If you're talking to two persons, it becomes antuma. So it's antu ma, antu ma, the same, ant, ant, but antu ma. Now, if you're talking about two, three or more, it's the still you, plural, but it's no longer two. You're talking to three or more that are boys only or a group of boys and girls. For example, you're talking to three boys. Use and the same, and two, and two. above it's and two ma because you're talking to here and tum, and tum. It's no longer and two ma. You only say silent ma, and tum. Here, if you are talking to boys or a group of boys of girls. Tab, what if you are talking to a group of girls only? It's no longer antum. When you have to, when you're talking to a group of girls or group that are girls, here it is antunna. So it's an the same antu. So here antuma, talking to two. And Tom, when talking to three or more a group of boys or a group of girls or boys, and Tom. But if you're talking to three or more girls, it's what? And Tonna. You are using ya yeah and stressing on it. It's and Tonna. Now the third point of view. Third point of view, we use it when you are talking about someone, talking not to someone directly, talking about someone who is absent, for example. When you're talking about someone. When you're talking to someone, you use you, even if singular or plural. This is the second point of view. When you're talking about yourself, it's one, you use Anna. If you're talking about ourselves, about ourselves, we use nahnu. This is the first point of view. The third point of view is we are talking about someone, but this someone may be singular or plural. Singular, masculine or feminine, a plural that is two or three or one. Yalla, let's start with he. For example, he is clever. He, so I'm talking about someone that he is clever. He is hua. Hua, if you're talking about someone that is what? masculine but if you're talking about someone that is feminine we use here she is clever okay she is clever here so the difference is that if you're talking about someone that is a masculine and he is one you use who wa who wa and we have the letter ha and wa who Wa. But if you're talking about she is clever, a girl, for example, Fatima is clever. Fatima is clever. Fatima, we use instead of it the pronoun what? She. She means he, yeah. So ha and yeah. They, they are clever. Fatima and Muhammad are clever. We have Fatima 
and we have Muhammad. How many are they? They are two. Okay, they are two. Yani now you no longer use he and she use. They are clever, but they are two using the third point of view. Okay, we, we go to the first part, who, and because they are two, it's huma. Okay, so the same. Here and to ma, if you are talking by, uh, about two. Here in the third point of view, you end it also with who, ma, it's ha, and ma, and then a, huma. Then what if you are talking about they, and this they, they are three or more, but here they are only boys, or a group of boys or girls. For example, Fatima, Muhammad and Hussein. Fatima, Muhammad, Hussein are clever. Here we have Fatima, group of boys and girls. Here they, what does it mean, whom? There, in the second, it means antum. Also here you start, you end it with whom. Now, what you are talking about, three or more girls, they are girls only. For example, Fatima, Salwa, and Zainab. What do we use here? There we use Antonna. Always who, 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 na. We use a stressed na. Hunna. That's why I put here tuna. Hunna. If I'm talking about three or more girls. So these are guys the first point of view, second point of view, and the third point of view. Now we are going to tackle the sentences using the second point of view. Now, if you say to someone who's he, you need to know who's he. Who's, you're asking about a person, you're using to ask about a person which is directly man. He is what, who? Who are they? But here, there's a condition. You are asking about a pair of people. They are two. Who is man? Who? Ma. Who are they? Let's assume who are they? You're asking about a group of women. It's no longer man huma. It's man hunna. Okay? Man hunna. So it's man hunna. Who are we? It depends on the name. Man, we, ourselves, man nahnu. Who are you? But here, if you are saying who are you, you are directing your question to a group of women. And you're talking about women's only. So man and tonna. So man and tonna. If you say, for example, who are you? If you if the who are you, but they are only boys, here you say man and ton. You no longer say man and tonna. Or they are two, they are only two, talking to two persons, man and two ma. So it depends on the pronoun that you are using here. So you have to memorize uh, carefully and uh, properly the, the pronouns of the first point of view, second point of view, third point of view. And you have to know that who means man. And you have to know that when you're asking a yes or no question, uh, you have to start with hell and you have to, to memorize how do we reply by the three types of current stages that we memorized in the dialogue. Now let's continue with other sentences. Let's assume you said to someone, hello, how are you? But this how are you is in general. You are not specifying here if it's masculine and uh, this, this how are you is used in yani No longer how are you means kayfa haluka or kayfa haluka if it's in general. Hello is what? Marhaban. You can say peace be with you, assalamu alaikum. You can say sabah al khair, masa al khair, whatever. Any type of greeting. And you, you can place, replace marhaban with any type of greeting. How are you? Here, you're not, we are not talking about, and we are, you are talking to a masculine or to a feminine. You are talking in general. How is always kaifa. Kaifa is used to talk about someone's current stages. Okay? So you need to know that who is man and how is kaifa man is used to ask about a person and kaifa to ask about someone's current status okay kaifa are you kaifa al hal why did i use al here we said it 
Why did I use L? Because you are specifying. You are using it in general, but you are specifying. You need to know this person, if he's a masculine, for example, you're talking to masculine, you say to him, you are specifying. كيف? So L is used when you are specifying. كيف الحال? The condition. So marhaban, كيف الحال? But in case you are talking to a masculine and you need to specify to a masculine, you say, كيف حالك? Or كيف حالك? This is how are you? We use it in general. Now, hello, please come in. Okay. Marhaban, كيف الحال? Hello also means أهلاً. Please come in. Someone came to you. He said to you, hello. Okay. He said, marhaban. He is going to visit you. And he visited you. For example, Mia visited Dania. Mia here said, marhaban. What did Dania reply by? Ahlan. So whenever you say marhaban, you say ahlan. Please come in. What do you mean by please come in? You are telling her, please come in. We took it before. It's not... If you're talking about a, uh, if the one who visited you is a uh, feminine, you, ha you have to say tafaddal. If he is a masculine, you say tafaddal. Now we are going to move to the grammar part and we're going to talk about a very important lesson today. As we know from the adjectives, we, um, we specified that uh, we are talking about uh, 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 one of the adjectives is differentiate between masculine and feminine. Now, the, Ara the, uh, the lesson here, the first grammar lesson is the Arabic definite article. What do you mean by definite, Yani? I'm talking about article that is specific, okay? I, uh, I've uh, passed this idea through the uh, lecture. So, Arabic definite article. The Arabic definite article that we're going to talk about he here is the. We notice that when we use the, we are going, we are specifying, talking about a noun that is specific, or we are specifying things. We need to know that the means in Arabic L. When we use L, it means that we are talking about something specific, or we are specifying. L in Arabic, it's made up of the A, the A is A, and the, la, uh, the L, the la, this L is La, L. So the book. That is what L and book is kitab. So here means that we are talking about a specific book. Okay? A book, when you say a book, we are talking about unspecified book. Okay? Which is kitab. And here we don't have L. Here we don't have L. We cannot say L kitab because we are talking about unspecified book. Remember when Dania said, I bought a new book. She didn't specify. We said, Ishtaraytu kitab. We didn't, we didn't say Ishtaraytu al kitab because here she didn't specify what's, what's this book. Okay? When Mia asked her, Who wrote this book? He, she is specifying here. That's why we used Al Kitab, okay? So if you are going to use that to express someone in English, then you are most likely to use Al in Arabic, okay? So if you are going to express someone, if you're going to express someone, then you are going to be directly specific. Then you have, if you are going to be directly specific, you should add to this noun Al, okay? Which is that, okay? Yeah. Example, the man is short. Man means what? Rajul. Type. To make it specific, you are talking specifically. If you are not talking specifically, you say Rajul. But you are, you are talking about this specific man. You are going to express him. Uh -huh. So what do you add? The. Al. So a, this is Rajul. And we know Al. It's like this. This is Al. We start with A and then what? La. Here the la should be changed because it's in the middle. Type. The man is short. This is a complete sentence. Okay. The man is short. Okay. Type. The short man. What if I replace uh, this sentence and, and I, I, I said the short man. Is it, is it uh, longer? Is it here a complete sentence? No. 
When you say the man is short, here I used a linking verb. I have a verb in the sentence. I link between the man and short. So this is linked between the noun and the adjective. But here I didn't use a, any verb. So this is a, not a, a, a complete sentence. It's a noun phrase. The short man. Okay, man, what does it mean? A rajul. Okay. Al-rajul. So here we have using him. Here short. There, when we say the man is short, a rajul qasir. This is a complete sentence, but we didn't use with the adjectives. But here, when, when it was a noun phrase, the short man, this adjective, we added to it al. A rajul al qasir. A rajul al qasir. So this is a what? A noun that is specified. This is, we call it. The definite noun. Why it's a definite noun? Because it's specified and we add it to it the or we add it to it l. So the noun becomes definite when you, when you add to it l or the. But here notice also the adjective of the definite noun, we add it to it what? L. So when the phrase is it's a noun a phrase, we need to make the adjective as the noun. If we add to the noun al, we need to add in to the adjective al. This is regarding the Arabic definite article. So the Arabic definite article is what? Al. The Arabic definite article is what? Al, which means in English, the. It means you are talking about, you are going to talk about, you are going to specify something. If you are going to specify something, for example, you say book, book here is unspecific. Book is kitab. If you want to specify, to say al kitab. Okay? This is regarding, so when you say al kitab, the noun becomes a definite noun. Yani a specific noun. Now, I'm going to move to, to, the, to the thing that I care mostly about in the grammar part, something called sun letters and moon letters, okay? Sun letters and moon letters. We have in Arabic language, we, we know the alphabetical letters in the Arabic language, they are 28, okay? But in the alphabetical language, there are part of these letters are called sun letters and part of these letters are called moon letters, okay? Let's see what are the sun letters and what are the moon letters. Sun letters means in Arabic, al huruf. Letters, we start because we are going to, sh uh, to shuffle. Letters in the plural is al-huruf. One letter, one letter is what? Al-harf. If you're talking letter, not specific, you say harf. But if you are going to specify a letter, you say al-harf. So al-harf, if you are talking about one letter. But if you're talking about letters, it's huruf. But here, because you are going to specify what are these letters, you say al huruf, sun, al huruf, al shamsiya. Notice that sun letters, this is a noun a phrase. It doesn't contain an adjective. So it, that's why you are going to add to sun also an l. Okay? If, if it's a complete sentence, you don't add to the adjective l. You only add to the noun. Okay? So al huruf, al shamsiya. Sun means in Arabic shamis. Okay, shamis. So sun in Arabic in general, we can take it as a, as a something, uh, an information shamis. Okay, but you are going to say al huruf al shamsiya. What do you add to it? Yeah, add it to make it or, or make it, make it in the feminine. You add ta marbuta shamsiya. Okay, shamsiya. It becomes you add ya and then ta marbuta. Why did you add here ta marbuta or you added uh, this ya? Because letters, huruf, it's in the plural, and everything in the plural, and you've been talking in the plural, and this plural, and this plural is not a person, it's non-person, or it's a thing, you are, uh, this plural is 
feminine, okay? Because it's feminine, you need to add to the shamis. If you say shamis only, this is masculine. Because plural, uh, plural uh, al huruf is feminine, this, its adjective should be feminine. That's why we added shamsiya. Okay, so sun letters is al huruf al shamsiya. What, what about moon letters? Letters, we know it's al huruf. Moon is al qamar. Moon in general is qamar. You are specifying here, you say al qamar. Okay, the same meaning letters is feminine, so moon becomes also feminine. Al qamariya. Okay, al qamariya. Yani you add ya and then ta marbuta. Okay, al huruf al qamariya. What are the moon letters and what are the sun letters? These are here, these are the sun letters. Let's see what are the sun letters. Why do, why we are uh, learning this? We are learning this because these sun letters and the moon letters, they are, uh, they come after the, they come after what? The, uh, they come after the definite article, the specific article, the or L, okay? What are the, what are the, these? Let's see. The sun letters are ta, tha, da, the, ra, za, sa, sh, sa, da, ta, va, la, and na. These are the sun letters that need to be memorized. What are the moon letters? We have a, we have ba, we have ja, we have ha, we have kha, we have a, we have ga, we have fa, we have qa, we have ma, we have ha, we have wa, we have ya, and we have ka. These are the moon letters. So, as we said, the definite article the is going to be attached to these letters. Yani the, these letters will come after L. So some of these letters are sun letters, and some of these letters are moon letters. And we know that L is attached to what? To a noun and it becomes a definite noun. But when we attach L to a definite noun that starts with sun letter or that starts with a moon letter, it's pronounced differently. We'll see how in the following slides. Now let's read correctly. For example, you said this is a big table. So, here, you're not saying, uh, for example, big table. Oh, this is a, a big table. Or the table is big. Here, we took, we've taken before that the table is big. This is a complete sentence, okay? The table is big. The table is big. Here, we have a linking verb. It's a complete sentence. The table, so we have L. Table is a tawila. Big is what? Kabira. A tawila. Big is what? Big in general is kabir. Kabir. Okay? Hi. Why did I say kabira? Because the noun is feminine. Okay? So a tawila kabira. It becomes a tawila kabira. But if I say the big table, notice here I didn't add to the adjective al. But what if, I, if this sentence was a noun phrase? The big table. This is a noun phrase, it doesn't contain a verb. The big, we start with table. Table is what? A tawila, okay? Because I'm specifying. But here, big is kabira, okay? We know that big is kabira, but since it's a noun phrase, we, not, we, add, we need to add L also to the adjective of the definite noun. So a tawila al kabira. Okay, now here there's another case. If we want to use L with moon letters, with definite nouns, and this definite nouns contains either moon letters or sun letters, we have to use demonstrative nouns. The demonstrative nouns like this are hadha and hadi, okay? Demonstrative. things, okay? So, this is a big table. We said that this means before hadha or hadhi. Okay, table is what? Tawila. Okay, 
let's see let's say here i'm talking about unspecific i'm being unspecific i'm not being specific i'm not going to insert here i'm not going to insert here al i'm being unspecific this is what table is what tawila so tawila is tamarbuta so we use hadhi what do you mean by big big is kabir and it's feminine it's hadhi tawila kabir type i want this sentence to become this table is big. Remember, we use the linking verb. Okay. This is heavy table here. What do I? What I should add to it to, to become one? You say this table is big here. What I'm going? I'm being specific. I'm being specific. I'm. Being, I have to use the definite article, which is l. So heavy tawila. It becomes l tawila. I added a and la. Okay. Big here kabira. Here we don't add. We don't add what. We don't add what al. When I say when it's a complete sentence, we don't add to the adjective al. So هذه الطاولة كبيرة. طيب here we have al. I said to you after al in a noun, either comes a moon letter, a letter that is a moon letter or a sun letter. Okay. We have to memorize the moon letter and the sun letter. But how do we pronounce? Do we pronounce it al طاولة or al طاولة? So. The pronunciation of L depends on the letter following letter. If the next letter is pronounced using the tip of the tongue, then the I sound is replaced by that sound. The I sound here means what? What you are going to do with L. Type. Ta. Is it a moon letter or a sun letter? Let's remember. Ta, it's a, moon, it's a sun letter. Everything that is a sun letter has shadda above it. This is called shadda, and you need to stress on the word. So this L is, comes after it, ta. And ta, as we said, it's a what? Sun letter. And because it's a sun letter, it, it should have shadda above it. Then here, this L is not pronounced. The I sound here is replaced by that sound. It's replaced by the sound of the sun letter. And you're going to pronounce the sun letter. So it becomes Notice you are using the tip of the tongue. So if the next letter is pronounced using the tip of the tongue, then the I sound is replaced by that sound, which means if, 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 we, if, a, if a sun letter comes after this L or after this I sound, you need to cross the I sound and you know, don't have to say it. For example, the man. The is L. Type man is Rajul. Notice here, ra is a, it's a sun letter or a moon letter. It's a sun, it's a sun letter. So here we need to say ar rajul. Notice here, I didn't put al. Ar rajul. Why did I put r two times? Because we have shab. Okay. If the next letter is, is pronounced using the tip of the tongue, then the i sound is replaced by that sound. If it's the rest, of, all the rest of the letters in alphabet are called moon letters, which is al huruf al kamariya. Here. We don't use the tip of the tongue, so the I, I sound is pronounced. This means that in the moon letters, you pronounce the L. For example, Al Qamar. Let's say Al Qamar from the Al Huruf Al Qamariya. So moon letters are Al Huruf Al Qamariya. Here we have Al, which means the moon. Okay? Al Huruf Al Qamariya. Sorry, Al Qamar. Here we have, which means the moon. Okay? Here we have, we are going, we're talking about a specific moon, okay? So the is what? L. But I need to see. The letter that is coming after L is Qa. Is it a moon letter or a sun letter? If it's a sun letter, if it's a sun letter, you'll see above the letter a Shadda. And when you see this Shadda, then this means that this is letter, this letter is sun letter. And here you need to, Cross L when reading. Qa doesn't have a shadda above it. So directly it's a definite, it's a moon letter. And because it's a moon letter, the I sound is pronounced. You need to pronounce the L. Yani don't cross the L. It becomes L kamar, mish a kamar. You have to pronounce the L, okay? So here you have. So in the moon letter, the L is pronounced. In the sun letter, when the L is comes after it a sun letter, this al is not pronounced, okay? 
So guys, this is regarding our lessons for today. So we need in the grammar part to know what do we mean by the Arabic definite article, the, and we, we have to know that the uh, is uh, called in, uh, we use it with specific nouns and we have to know what are the uh, moon letters and what are the sun letters. And we know that if uh, after L comes a sun letter, we need to cross the, uh, this L and no, don't pronounce it when reading. And if it comes after L, a moon letter, we need to pronounce this L or the I sound of this letter is pronounced.